What is history? In the words of English writer G.K. Chesterton, History is only a confused heap of facts. Well, that might be the case if you're simply trying to memorize a boring list of dates and events, but... History is not something that's just in a textbook, and when you hear about the Civil War, you know, 1860, people think it has nothing to do with them, and the lives of kids back then and the lives of kids today, technology-wise, may be very different, but there's a lot of the same ideas that permeate through time. So if you could connect those ideas in a way that today's students relate to, the past comes to life. If only there was some record that people who lived 150 years ago might have left for us to collect. The Historical Society has had this collection of Civil War letters probably for, I don't know, 100 years. We've been talking about doing different types of projects for the sesquicentennial of the Civil War, and I had just been looking at this particular collection of letters, and it was a Friday afternoon, and Jeannie just kind of popped in to see kind of what we were up to. This all happened just before Miss Del Colley learned she was to be honored as New Jersey's Teacher of the Year. More on that later. She mentioned the Civil War and the uh, director who was there said, wait a second, we have this project if you're interested. In about 20 minutes, a project was just, it just blossomed. The goal of the project is to take the letters from a 17-year-old local Civil War soldier named David Hankins and his cousins Samuel and Zachariah and to actually transcribe them from their beautiful calligraphy handwritten pieces of artwork that they are into a computer database that teachers can eventually access and we're going to do lesson plans that, that go along with it um, and we're going to have a student-led exhibition in the spring once the letters are done with the artifacts that the Historical Society has. Ms. Stokoli sent me an email over the summer saying that she had this project and uh, would I be interested? And I was like, heck yeah. When I heard about this opportunity, I just jumped on it because it's a piece of history that I'm a part of, basically. I'm writing out these letters. Perhaps they'll be in textbooks, you know, they could be in museums, I don't know. Hopefully Ms. D says it wants to get published so that people can see the history of what went on, how people talked, how people felt back then in the wars. He was in a war. He was fighting for his life. He was worried about his family. He lived where I lived. They realized that, yeah, there was some important stuff that happened around here, and, and they are as much of a part of history today as he was back then. We have taken a couple of the letters that we thought were some of the, the juicier letters and we're going to turn them into videos. Basically, I've just taken a glimpse of like pictures from, of the Civil War and combined them in there. And then what I did, instead of like just having the words written out onto the video, I had my younger brother actually do the voiceovers for it. So well, let's take a look at this uh, video and see, uh, see what you got here. Dear friend, I received your very welcome letter the 9th inst and I was very much pleased to hear from you. I was home in June, and I tell you I had a nice time of it. I was home 18 days. I was up to Reckless Town while I was home, but I did not know that you was to work there at the time I would have come down to the mill to see. You really kind of get this perspective of, um, you know, what it was like to be 17 and in the Civil War. The way he writes, it's like you actually want to sit down and have a conversation with them. It was real. It, the words came alive. You get that feeling of, I need to tell my family I'm okay. That's the entire point of this letter. In a way, it was, felt like it was kind of hurtful and heartbreaking. You kind of put it in your imagination, like, what if this was you? He missed his mother's home cooking, and, you know, as I was reading about the food he was writing about, I started, like, getting this terrible feeling in my stomach because I couldn't imagine eating anything so vile. <laughs> He writes about the girls and how New Jersey girls are better. Jersey girls are better than, than Southern women who used to chew tobacco and spit, evidently. The language is completely different. The grammar was hard to read. It's very hard not to fix it because the grammar was horrible. And we weren't allowed to change it or make any grammar changes. We just had to write it as it was. And I think the purpose of that was to have more of a an idea of how they thought and how they were taught back then. I do think we get a better education today because as you read the letters and rewrite them, it's like, whoa. 
the good kind of woe is a typical reaction to Jean Del Colli and the way she connects history and culture to the lives of her students, one of the reasons she was chosen as New Jersey's top teacher. When I heard that Miss Del Colli won Teacher of the Year, I literally almost cried. <laughs> she deserved it because all this, like when we were in class, she was saying, oh, I'm still going to school. Like, she's gone to school three times already and she's still going. She's a student of her craft. She continues to learn in her craft. She's enthusiastic about it. Um, again, she brings enthusiasm uh, in, in the classroom as far as her instructional approach. So I think she has all, all the pieces and, and she wants to continue to learn. I wasn't surprised at all. We all knew it. Like, um, we all knew she was material for Teacher of the Year. It was just a matter of them figuring it out. She really did it. I was so proud of her. I couldn't have been more happy for her. I like to work with young people. I like to, um, to travel and bring those experiences back. And if I can help one of them um, sort of find their way out in the world or maybe think about things in a different way or want to go and explore the world, then I think I'm doing a pretty good job.